Do you speak crowd lending? Welcome to our podcast covering the crowd lending industry. Our mission is to provide you with all the insights from this market and help you make informed decisions. I'm Gassen, co-founder and CEO of Acredius. We are a crowd lending platform based in Zurich, Switzerland. I'm delighted to host this podcast and hopefully bring value to all our listeners. Hi, everyone. Welcome to our episode number 11 of Do You Speak Crowd Lending? I'm glad today to have Elina Ionenko. Elina is the co-founder of Trinkey Lender, and she was named as one of the top 100 women in fintech world in 2019. She will definitely tell us more about this. Hi, Elina. Hi, Gassan. Hi, everyone. Thank you very much for inviting me. Thank you, Elina. So please tell me more. So how, how, how can we become the, one of the top 100 women in fintech uh, in 2019 or in general? And please also tell us more about yourself. Sure. So I'm a co-founder of Turnkey Lender, and Turnkey Lender is a provider of technology for financial institutions. So that's uh, how I'm connected to the financial industry and to the fintech. And uh, basically, I spent my entire career in finance. I'm Russian, but I moved to the U.S. in 2000. I did my MBA in uh, Santa Clara University in the heart of Silicon Valley. So that's where I got my entrepreneurship bug. So, and I co-founded two startups before, um, uh, before starting Turnkey And all of those startups were somehow related to financial industry. Yeah, so since 2014, I'm working on Turnkey Lender project, and um, it was exciting. It was really, um, really great opportunity to join this uh, one in a lifetime trend of online lending. And um, you probably understand what I'm talking about because um, we haven't seen that before. Um, like it happened to commerce when it migrated online and became e-commerce. And uh, now we see it happening to the banking industry, to lending, right? It's becoming e-lending. Excellent. Um, so, key lender, I mean, you guys have a very interesting business model. Um, you already explained it to me uh, before this interview, but can you please tell, explain this also to our listeners? Sure. So we are a provider of technology, automation technology to online lenders. We work in uh, 50 countries uh, with uh, more than 150 lenders, and we support both um, those who do on balance sheet lending and uh, peer to peer lenders. Our platform automates every single step in the lending process. It's end to end, it's fully automated, it's fully integrated for each country where we operate. Um, but at the same time, it's modular. So our uh, customers can choose which functionality they want to deploy. They can start with just one uh, module, like a uh, decision-making engine or underwriting module or loan origination. And then they can build it up uh, to like a bigger platform, adding loan management and reporting. So we provide complete freedom and flexibility to our customers. You can do whatever you want. Uh, we support any credit product, you can run uh, consumer and business lending on the same platform. And uh, it's flexible, it's not hard coded, you can do any modifications in your processes and your decision rules and in your policies without, without um, relying on your IT and uh, within, within really a short time, it just takes mere minutes on hours to make any modifications in your workflows. So that's that's um, about our technology. And our model is also different because uh, we don't charge any flat fees. Um, our uh, pricing model is tied to the portfolio. So the bigger you are, um, the uh, smaller percentage we would charge for our, um, uh, for our technology. So it uh, usually win-win situation and uh, we support your success and because yeah, basically our pricing is success-based. That's great. And I also know that you guys use um, alternative ways of credit scoring. 
can you tell us a bit more about the, the, the advantages of, of alternative scoring in general versus traditional ones? Absolutely. So um, that's one of the advantages of uh, providing end-to-end -end technology. Uh, we can see the performance of loans uh, from the application processing to the um, to the complete um, repayment, and uh, this way we can analyze how different data points affect the credit worthiness. And we've been working with traditional uh, credit scoring approaches uh, from the very beginning, as well as with alternative uh, data scoring approaches. Um, what we see is that um, the majority of lenders and in online lending as well were uh, mostly relying on traditional ways of assessing credit worthiness. Uh, if we talk about business lending, you would uh, look at the historical financial data, you would do ratio analysis and all of that. Uh, you would uh, also look at some uh, qualitative characteristics like uh, business owners' profiles and such. Um, in the current environment, uh, when we all um, were hit um, by COVID-19 pandemic, the, um, the very basis of this analysis, the historical stability becomes um, uh, somewhat irrelevant. So we cannot just rely on the historical performance because um, in, during the crisis, uh, different businesses can um, cope uh, differently with this, um, with this crisis. So uh, that's why the, the value and the importance of alternative scoring becomes more and more um, relevant. And uh, if before it was mostly used by more advanced uh, lenders just as a complementary tool. Now they rely more on alternative data, specifically on bank statement data, because it can give us real time snapshot of the company's performance. And we can, um, and we can compare that to the historical performance, but more importantly, we can see how they cope with the crisis. What's the uh, chances for them to overcome these difficulties and to um, become a good borrower. So, yeah, so when we talk about um, alternative data, uh, it's mostly bank statement uh, transactional data, mm -hmm. but also social network data is important. You know, we can see at businesses, um, um, Facebook pages and take into account uh, the number of likes, dislikes, followers, all of that. So um, it, during, during the crisis, the alternative data is um, gradually superseding the traditional um, credit scoring uh, approach, I think. Absolutely, absolutely. I think also it's, it's, it, it, it is definitely part of the future. Alternative data will be needed for the future for, for any lender in general. So speaking about lenders, um, how is the landscape of crowd lending or P2P lending industry in the U.S.? And you guys are based in the U.S., right? Uh, yes, we are based in the U.S. now, but we started in Singapore. So uh, we have some very strong um, uh, presence in Asia Pacific as well. And I moved to Singapore in 2015 just because of those um, um, huge opportunities with uh, unbanked populations and uh, developing markets. So we were uh, focusing on um, Southeast Asia for a few years, but uh, then we could see that um, the demand in the U.S. is also uh, great. And last year, I moved back to the U.S. to uh, to set up a local office and to expand our operations here. So uh, now what we observe in the U.S. Uh, is um, in P2P lending is somewhat similar to what happened in 2008, uh, because even though the first P2P lenders in the U.S. appeared about 15 years ago, uh, this industry really thrived uh, during the economic crisis of 2008 when uh, the when small businesses were looking for um, uh, for financing and, and uh, the traditional lenders just were unable to make loans uh, or they, you know, that a lot of banks just um, collapsed. And um, um, and uh, at that time, P2P lenders just stepped in and uh, started providing 
loans to small businesses, to consumers, and they help uh, with overcoming that economic crisis. So in this, uh, right now, what we see is that COVID-19 pandemic uh, crisis actually acting as a catalyst for this industry as well. And although um, different um, P2P lenders were affected differently by this um, crisis, particularly those uh, who were relying on more traditional um, uh, credit scoring approaches, uh, they found themselves in the situation when they don't know anymore who's good, who's bad. And uh, they had to cut back on their underwriting and um, um, many lenders have a hard time collecting uh, the payments from their borrowers. But those who were uh, more um, forward-looking and uh, who started using these alternative credit scoring approaches earlier, they were able to adjust. They were able to review their credit policies quickly and um, they're actually well-positioned for the future growth. In fact, the uh, the global market of P2P lending is um, expected to grow like tenfold uh, within the next uh, ten years. So, um, yeah. So, I think the the future for the industry uh, is uh, really um, promising, and uh, those who are able to act quickly, um, they'll be fine and they'll be growing because you know that. Uh, borrowers, they are more educated now. They are open to digital financial services. And in many cases, they prefer an online offering to the offline options. So, you know, with the use of right technology and with the right approach to the credit scoring, um, the P2P lending industry will be growing. Interesting. So let's leave, let's give some perspective. So we are today recording this uh, podcast on July 29th, 2020. So the Corona crisis is still there a little bit everywhere. So would you, Elena, argue that this crisis will have positive effects on the industry? Yes, so if we're talking about P2P lending industry, yes, it will, it will accelerate the growth of this industry. Because even though here in the U.S. there were multiple um, government pro programs supporting small businesses, um, the demand for short-term uh, capital, for working capital, is still there. And many traditional financial institutions like banks and credit unions, they just don't have the right technology in place to, um, to meet this demand. In many cases, they don't have much online presence altogether. And in other cases, their um, uh, policies and their internal processes are so manual and slow that they just cannot keep up with the fintechs, with online lenders. So um, yes, I, I think that overall, it will have very positive impact on the financial industry in general and P2P lending in particular. Interesting. So what do you think are the main advantages of this asset class, P2P lending, from an investor perspective? Uh, from an investor perspective, the main and most obvious advantage is that uh, you can get much better returns on your investment. P2P uh, lenders, they offer much better uh, interest rates on the investment to lenders, and that would be probably the main advantage. It also can be a very good option for diversifying your investment portfolio so that um, you, you have well-rounded and um, well-rounded portfolio that generates healthy returns. Another advantage I can think of is that uh, you have way more flexibility um, when you need to withdraw your funds. And many P2P lenders, they offer easier um, ways of uh, withdrawing your investment when you need to withdraw them. Mm -hmm. So um, overall, um, I think uh, that's a really a good um, way um, of uh, allocating uh, funds. As long as you did your homework and you trust uh, the P2P lender uh, you work with. What would be your advice for a beginner investor 
who is interested in this asset class and wants to try it or even invest on, on P2P lending on the long term? Okay, I'm not an advisor by any means, right? So um, I'm just a technology provider. Uh, so, uh, But I think it's extremely important to do research and to understand the credit scoring approaches to risk assessment and the um, level of technology used by a particular P2P lender. Uh, because... Um, like a few years ago, um, it, like the in-house developed automa automated technology would mm -hmm. present certain uh, um, competitive advantage, mm -hmm. but it's not anymore because um, if the P2P lender is using some in-house built system, which might be rigid and hard to adjust, in the current environment, when you need to be very um, responsive to the changing um, um, conditions of the market, it's very important to use the most flexible and most advanced uh, technology um, for, for making the right decisions. So I think that would be essential just to see the performance of the portfolios of um, the uh, P2P lenders you're considering working with uh, in details historically, but also um, uh, the most recent ones, and to understand uh, if the risk assessment approaches are in line with your um, risk expectations, and then uh, of course to to compare what's available, what else avail available in the market, and to see if you are getting the best return um, uh, for your investment. That's great. That's great. Uh, now, Alina, I have a very, very important question. Uh, in general, it comes at the end. A lot of our guests try to trick me out of it. Um, but I'm really, really interested in knowing, and I think our listeners too, uh, we're interested in knowing what's your favorite food, basically. Okay, my favorite food is an apple, but <laughs> not those apples that you can buy in supermarkets, which are uh, hard rock uh, kind of <laughs> fruits uh, which uh, can withstand like many months of shell life and uh, which are covered uh, with uh, wax or whatever. So mm -hmm. I like those apples which are seasonal, you know, like Macintosh variety. They have very <laughs> thin and tender skin and very juicy flesh. So I like those apples. So I'm always uh, waiting for the right season. It usually happens in August and September. And it uh, doesn't uh, last long when you can have like the real apples, like from your own garden, you know, which may be not perfect and not uh, as good looking as those that they sell in supermarkets all year round. But um, that's my favorite fruit, definitely. Excellent. You're not the first guest speaking about apple and that type of specific apple. So I can understand that. Uh, it's, it's basically very authentic and you don't find it all over the, the, the seasons. So, uh, no, I agree. That's, that, that's a great food to like. <laughs> so, <laughs> thank you very much, Alina. Uh, anything you want to tell us? Uh, you want to tell us anything more about Trunky or the next things that are on the table? Or? Absolutely. I welcome everyone to visit our website. We have a great blog with a lot of insightful information on lending, on peer-to-peer -peer lending, on other innovative ways of lending, also on um, different approaches to um, um, credit risk assessment. We are strong believers in application of artificial intelligence and machine learning to the financial industry. We have a dedicated team uh, working just on... Um, these Aspects. applications and tools yes so um uh, we would love to uh we would love to share our expertise with anyone interested and uh we look forward to uh talking to you sometime again soon elina thank you very much for all these insights thank you everyone who are listening to us and see you in the next episode thank you I hope you enjoyed this episode. Thanks again for staying with us until the end. Make sure you subscribe to our podcast and follow us on social media so you'll never miss an episode. 
please don't hesitate to send us your questions and comments at agridius.ch. Thank you.